joining the show today is one of us by way of the 26th overall pick in the 2021 NHL draft, now playing for your Iowa Wild, Carson Lambos. Thanks for jumping on with us, Carson. Yeah, thanks for having me. Carson, I gotta ask, what what's the, the go-to nickname? What do the boys call you in the locker room? Uh it's been Gini this year, uh, Lambos, Lamborghini, turned into Gini. So um, that's Love a good that. one. I've never, never heard that one until this year, but it's kind of stuck. Okay. Well, do, do you like Gini or what do you prefer? Yeah, it's good. I think it's been pretty vanilla before this, just Lambo or Lamb. Um, so that was pretty boring, and Gini kind of is a little, little bit more exciting. So I, I'm a fan of it. Oh, man, that takes me directly into Dumb and Dumber. But uh, we, we can circle back on that. We got to lead in with our opening question that we ask everyone. And we've gotten some wild responses to this. Minnesota Wild logo. What do you see? Kind of just see a, a bear and then some trees in the back. Uh, kind of like the wild. I think there's like a river kind of in there, lake sort of thing mm-hmm. at the front of the logo. Um yeah, the sun. The sun is like the the top of it. But yeah, it's kind of like a bear with just like nature kind of infused in a bunch of different spots. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Sneaky cool logo. Okay. I don't know if I don't know if you saw the wild did like a kind of a social media thing where they had all the guys try to draw the wild logo. No, I didn't uh, see that. You said like the Kirill Kaprizov and Boldy and Faber, they all tried to like they just gave them looked at it for five seconds and you'd go and like write on this little sketch sketch pad and you have to check it out because yeah. really none of us are none of us are artists. I don't pretend to do it any better than they would, but it's just kind of funny. Like, yeah, I'm glad I was the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you still see everything, but like, did you always see the whole logo, or is it something that like you always saw the bear and then saw the wilderness later, or vice versa? Yeah, I think kind of just saw the bear first, and obviously spend a bit more time around the logo and just kind of like looking at it, I guess, and you see it a bit more for what it's supposed to be. So. No, growing up, I mean, it was the same logo and knew all the NHL teams, but I don't think I really paid much mind to what it was until kind of started spending more time just being around it, I guess. Well, if you saw, like, you could tell our uh, name of a pod is Fellowship at the Rink. It's that little Lord of the Ring uh, playoff there. Do you have a, a nerd nerddom or something like that that kind of a little behind the scenes interest? Like, I don't know if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, if you're Harry Potter, or if you're into collecting stamps or, like, anything that kind of – you have your own little unique thing. Yeah, I like uh, I like um, Star Wars quite a bit. Kind of been into that one. Um, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen every last series of it, but the classic six movies I'm pretty into, and even the new three, three, four ones are good. Um, so yeah, we had our Star Wars night this year, and uh, did quite a bit of the media for that one. Just kind of showcasing the star wars fan i guess but another kind of quirk i have is wherever we go on the road i kind of collect uh fridge magnets from each city or try to get some so i have quite a few uh quite a few now from you know western canada playing junior and now uh obviously expanding where i've been going so uh trying to trying to load up a little bit and it's it's kind of a cool thing to look back on you can remember spots and where you were and what you were doing so that's uh that's another thing i got going oh i love that i'm a big uh refrigerator magnet guy for vacations like you got to bring something back but like you can always find something unique i, I probably have like five of them that are fashioned into bottle openers but that's not important yeah no i, I should say that my mom was doing it before i did and once i kind of ventured out and realized i was gonna have my own place i've uh it's kind of like family tradition now at this point so Nice. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't like the look of an empty fridge. I think there's got to be something going on on it. You, uh, you mentioned your mom, and I know you have uh, obviously a family that's really a big inspiration for you. Like, what, what's your, your mom was a firefighter for a while? Is that right? Yeah, no, she mm-hmm. still is. She's actually uh, coming up on retirement in a couple months here this summer. So she's been doing it for I don't know if she'd want me to say a long time, but a long time. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that's what she does. Did she bring you guys, you and your brother, by like? the station is like that and give you a little tour and kind of show you what, what it's like. Yeah. Like when we were younger, I, me and my older brother, um, we would go by and kind of go in the truck and see all the equipment. And it was, had a bit more pizzazz then when, than now, but, um, even like these past three, four years, my mom's been stationed out of a hall, which is, 
not even not even a kilometer away from our house. So, um, you know, I kind of get to go there sometimes for lunch um, and see see her crew. And obviously the firefighters are pretty good cooks and it's really good meals, but it's kind of just fun being around, being around that. It's interesting, you know, her career is a bit of the locker room talk kind of that we have. Um, so I, I think it's pretty cool to have that experience and just kind of be around uh, around the, fire, the crew and, eating with them. So I've, I've, it's turned more into that lately. And how much influence was your, your grandpa too? Like you, I think you mentioned before that he's from Greece, right? He came over like, yeah, like or so. Yeah. He uh, came over probably 18, 19 and um, just kind of, kind of typical immigrant story, I guess uh, started shoe shining and little odd jobs like that until he opened up uh, a burger place that, you know, anyone from Winnipeg listening will know by the name of the Dairy Whip, which is a pretty popular spot there now, which is now uh, my uncle and other owners have it. But he kind of started that up from the ground ground up. And so he's obviously someone who's a, a hardworking guy and just kind of put his head down and um, made something when he started with next to nothing. So I think that's uh, definitely someone I look up to. And um, yeah. So if I rolled in there for the first time, what's the go-to order? How are you going to sell me on it? Yeah, I would just say get a fat boy with the chili and fries and a chocolate shake. You don't need to uh, mix it up. The, the Greek style burgers kind of has the chili on it and uh, all the all the toppings. So it's a bit of a mess, but it's uh, it's really good. And um, yeah, it's unreal. <laughs> Sounds and- pretty health, healthy, healthy too. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. That, yeah. Once um, in a to, uh, to work that off, tell us about the Grit Garage. Uh, or is that what it's called or like your uh your kind of home home style gym you guys created yeah kind of during covid um you know in canada there's a few separate times things shut down the first time kind of just made do with what we had and running and whatever stuff we could do to work out and then uh you know things shut down again for we kind of saw it was going to be a long time and we put together a little bit of a a garage gym so um it was I don't even know, maybe a hundred, 200 square feet this thing was. And we'd open the, open the garage door and have the fan going and music going. And it was, uh, it was fun um, between me and my brother and uh, made the most of what we had at the time. And it's kind of good memories and you know, fun to look back on. Yeah. What was the most creative thing you used for like weights or like for machines? Like I'm sure you didn't have the whole, the full setup. Of yeah. I mean, ways. I think one thing that kind of sticks out is if we were doing like weighted chin-ups, you'd put a backpack on and put a couple of uh, weights or rocks or something in there and just use that for weighted chin-ups. So that was a good one. Um, but we had a few dumbbells and like a barbell. So that was uh, that was definitely adequate for a lot of things. Yeah. How, how, how much weight did you use for the pull-ups today? Oh, I had two big rocks, a medium rock, and a couple small rocks. <laughs> yeah. Just keep uh, adding rocks in there. Exactly. Uh, on the topic of COVID then, What's it like, like season shuts down and you go on loan and go play in Finland? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, Looking back at that, um, I was 17 at the time and moved across the world and obviously at a crazy time in the world, not knowing what tomorrow was bringing. And uh, I'm grateful for that experience, experiencing a different culture, kind of realizing what the imports go through when they come here and gave me some perspective on that. So um, that was really cool and um, you know met some met some good friends there and um, they introduced me to the Finnish culture and it was uh, it was fun um, you know the hockey had its ups and downs and um, you know I missed a big part of that season just with some medical stuff but um, you know I think I came through it stronger than I was before what was your favorite you know part of the Finnish culture my family is obviously from there and so got into the whole sauna uh, routine uh, from that day like what was your favorite part about you know being in the country or things that you ate or thing you did, um, they're going to be part of it. Yeah. The sauna stuff is pretty sweet. Um, even like in the apartment building, each individual apartment has its own sauna. So that's kind of, uh, lays it out for how big the saunas are to them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was cool. And then just, uh, they're, they're really nice people and we're really accepting to me, at least, you know, the team I experienced, um, kind of keep to themselves a little bit. It's a bit of a culture shock when you first get there, but uh, once the onion, the layers peel back a bit, you realize they're fun people and, um, you know, good teammates. 
What's the most unique magnet you brought back? I think I just brought one back from uh, Uvascula, the the city city I was in. Um, just says Uvascula on it. It kind of has the skyline of uh, skyline of the downtown on it. So it's uh, it's nothing crazy, but something to remember. Pick up any finish, you know, any words, anything yet? Kind of barely. Um, just a couple of the bad ones. I uh, the bad ones. <laughs> it's a, I know it's some a tough of those language. <laughs> You mentioned uh, obviously going through a medical issue. I don't know how much you want to get into that, but it clearly is a thing that you kind of overcame. Um, just how much did you think that affected you kind of going into the draft and kind of people probably asking questions about it to see where you might end up? I don't know if that was something that kind of really, um, you know, that really impact, impacted you then. Yeah, I mean, it's hard hard to say the what ifs. Um, try not to worry about that too much. Um, things are working out as they are, but um, yeah, I, I don't think it fares well for anyone when they miss a big portion of their, their draft season. And um, I, you know, made the most of what I had and I was fortunate enough that the wild um, liked what they saw um, from what they could see prior, prior to that. So um, I don't, I don't think uh, the what ifs are um, what would have been. So I'm, I'm happy with what happened uh, the way it went. And it, was it during the drafts except the interviews over Zoom and stuff too? Or like, did you have a lot of in-person stuff with like Garen and the guys and stuff? No, everything was kind of through Zoom. Um, all the different teams. Uh, yeah, I never really had that experience of the combine and the in-person interviews. Uh, just sort of on Zoom and talking to scouts and then different teams do it differently. And um, But yeah, I talked to Billy. Billy through uh through Zoom calls how how it went with the wild. And like if you got a crazy curveball type question, did you just throw out the oh, I'm sorry, connection's bad. Can you repeat that? <laughs> no, I uh I wish I would have. Um but no, I, I I did my best. Uh maybe uh if you guys throw me one here I can get a bad connection or something, but uh no, I didn't use that one. What's been your the biggest transition to to pro hockey? Um, obviously you have a lot of resources there. You can, uh, use a lot of young guys, you know, play in the blue line, but what's been the biggest thing where it's like, wow, this is different here. Uh, first playing in junior. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot, uh, you know, you definitely go from junior being the guy to it's playing close to half the game and, um, you know, longer leash and, and all that stuff. And you come here and it's competitive and there's other guys ready. If you're, making mistakes and not going. So um, just that sort of thing, having to learn to play, play like that, still trying to make plays and play freely, but also uh, tightening up at the right time. So um, just kind of finding that balance has been uh, something I've been, I've been struggling a bit at times with and trying to just grow in that way is, is big for me. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people say the size and the skill and um, the speed of the game is faster, which it definitely is. But uh yeah, I think that mental side is is just as much. Yeah, it was interesting, like having that, uh, watching you and, and Cody friends and going through the video uh, last week and showing how those clips, all these little small things, make such a big difference. If you were to kind of explain to people or uh, that, like, what's like some of the bigger adjustments, kind of going from AHL to make it NHL, what are some of the things that he's been explaining to you? Of what are the next steps for you to get there? Yeah, there's so many small details. I think. Um, a theme for me recently has just been trying to eliminate an extra handle and being more confident with the play. And I don't have to, I could maybe seeing it before, uh, before I get the puck instead of having to get the puck and see it and then making it because by then it might jam your forward up or slow the play down a little bit. So just trying to, trying to, to move pucks faster when, when the time is right to do it. And then on the same side, um, like I said, the balance, there's times you don't want to move the puck fast and you need to hold on to it and wait for things to develop. So trying to find that balance of knowing knowing when to hold on to it and make plays and also when you need to get rid of it and put the puck off the glass or even just ice it. And talk about the locker room too. Like a lot of like great characters in there, but also a pretty young group and you see a lot of guys that kind of go back and forth between there and Minnesota. Like what is it like just keeping that, uh, that identity in the locker room moving forward? Yeah. Like we do definitely have a young team. Um, I think 
that being said, though, the the older guys we have, they, they set the tone and they set the standard and and every day, you know, they're working hard. And I think that really bleeds down, um, you know, with young guys wanting to make an impression and um, just trying to, everyone's trying to get better. So I think we, we work really hard and that's uh, probably the main identity of our team. I think even when things aren't going our way and um, we're, we're struggling a bit, we're still working and um, there's been next to none to next to none times where we've, uh, where we quit and where we give up. So I think we're, uh, we're definitely a hardworking team. It seemed like you had a lot of good teamwork off the ice too. Like Mikey Milne was telling me a story about when they were moving um, to their place and a mattress fell off their truck. I was curious how you were able, how did that happen and how are you able to help uh, assist two injured uh, forwards in particular? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was funny. Um, I think it was at the start of the year when we got here and it was Mikey and uh, bank here and they both weren't playing at the start of the year. They had their injuries and then it was me and Masters in my car driving behind Mikey. Mikey has like a Ram truck. So he's got his mattress in the back and we're going down uh, MLK here in Iowa, which is a pretty busy street. Like it's not some side road and we're going down it. And I guess Mikey got too excited and was going too fast and out came his mattress. I had to hit the brakes pretty hard. So it didn't hit my Civic. And then, uh, uh, you know, we're on the bridge and cars are going by and, turned the hazards on and we did like an NASCAR pit stop. We got that mattress back in the bed of his truck after he backed up a bit in less than a minute. So it was, uh, it was definitely some good teamwork and something to look back at and, and laugh at. So you guys like, didn't um, like one of the guys have like crutches on or what I guess we'll be able to move. Right. Yeah. I think bank here wasn't moving too good at that time yet. Um, he was probably more so sitting there laughing at what, what was going on with us. And, uh, I think me and Masters had to pick up uh, the heavy load there and uh, take care of those those injured guys. And I mean, talk about living in Iowa compared to uh, I mean, spending pretty much your entire upbringing there in Winnipeg. Yeah, um, I think in terms of the the place, it's it's pretty similar. But obviously, leaving home, there's a lot of a lot of differences. Um, you know, the weather and the city and the size of it. And, um, you know, I feel like Canada kind of has a bit of a Midwest or Winnipeg has a bit of a Midwest feel, you know, it's prairies flat. And I think it's kind of the same here, um, cold and windy. So there's a lot of similarities that way, but living on, on my own, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, you're not going home and seeing, uh, seeing mom or dad every day. And it's, you know, you gotta cook for yourself and, um, you know, do all the little things around the house that you just kind of take for granted when, when mom's doing those ones. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot, a bit more responsibility, but, uh, it's, it's fun. So I was just Winnipeg with corn basically. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and you being like, so entrenched in Winnipeg, right? Like you mentioned that your grandpa had the, the burger spot and that's been passed down to the family. You grew up through there and played for the Winnipeg ice. What's it like not having a WHL team there anymore? Yeah, it's uh, it's too bad. Um, you know, the four years of my four years of junior were all in Winnipeg, and those were the only years there was uh, the Western League in Winnipeg. So um, it's too bad that things can work out, and you kind of look back, and there's there's no team any there anymore. Um, you know, I'll definitely remember my memories there in Winnipeg, and. Uh, my teammates think we have a bit of a special bond, kind of knowing we were the only ones to to go and have that experience in Winnipeg, playing out of the university rank and a lot of things like that we kind of had fun with. So, um, yeah, it's too bad, but uh, it was a, it was a good ride. You obviously hear about all this, the stories about the bus rides and stuff and travel in the AHL versus NHL, but do you have any favorite AHL cities, like favorite road trips? Like this one isn't going to be that bad. I like this place we go to and all yeah. that stuff. Um, we haven't we haven't been to all of them yet. Uh, kind of a few teams in uh, California, and then obviously we play our division a bunch. But um, Tucson and San Diego were pretty sweet, and we were just in uh, Austin too. And those are obviously a little bit warmer than it is here, so <laughs> that's something to look forward to when you go on those trips. But uh, no, I mean the fans in this league have been or has been a lot better than I expected, and you play in. Uh, all these buildings and it's pretty electric every night and it's you know you look forward to that doesn't really matter where you are what's going on outside the rink when uh, 
you get that opportunity to play, you know, on these road cities and it's, it's fun. Well, you're wearing a hat now, so I can't really tell how that haircut actually turned out, but uh, obviously you saw the uh, maybe mistakes were made in your great, great clips experience, right? Like how did that kind of all shake down? Yeah. Um, I kind of needed a, a haircut um, and I didn't really have a spot in Des Moines. I said, Oh, I'll just go to, go to great clips and sat down and asked for shorter on the sides, longer on the top. And, Next thing you know, there's no guard on the razor, and I'm bleeding on the side of my head. And uh, they didn't they didn't charge me, so at least there's that. But uh, yeah, it might be my last. I might have to get my hair cuts in the off season from uh, here on out. And how did your teammates help you? Didn't Brendan help you with that? Uh, yeah, there was a bit the... of a bit of a rat tail going on there at one point. And I mean, I'm a pretty big target most days in the in the room with. Uh, chirps and whatnot I, I do it to myself too but that definitely gave a lot of ammo and um uh they like to point out that i had a bit of a rat tail and uh he tried to clean it up i don't know if it could have gotten any worse than it was but he probably made it worse and it's funny to have that video and to, and to look back at it though yeah we'll have that we'll have that video to this podcast so people can see it too on the youtube part of it because it's classic of teammates helping teammates just like yeah. the whole the whole uh whole process yeah returning the favor right that's it that's it well joe you'll like this one too i don't know if you guys are familiar with the jimmy fallon superlatives that he either maybe still does or at least used to always do for the nhl playoffs but there was one it's basically like the high school yearbook thing like he takes the guys uh like team photo and like gives them a caption underneath most likely to and it was Andre Vasilevsky, who, like, you've seen some of his photos, Joe. Like, he, his yeah. hair is just mangled. And it literally said underneath, most likely to walk into a barber shop and say, just ruin me. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I hear crazy hair stories, I just go right back. I'm like, ah, oh, Vasilevsky, yes. What would be your award winners for your team if we asked, like, who would be the best and worst dressed guys in the wild, Iowa Wild? Uh one name that has to come up when you're talking about clothes is, is Hansi. Um I think he's a pretty polarizing uh, fashion guy in terms of hockey. He kind of has his own thing going and uh, looks pretty good a lot of days and big into the vintage stuff and the rest of it, and he's always looking fresh. Um, yeah, so he's uh, he's definitely, definitely up there. And um, Mike Milne, he's kind of got some – he likes to look good when he's – going anywhere and you can tell he gets excited to to dress up so he's kind of a fun guy to to talk about with uh his clothes but no i think uh it's a good it's a well-dressed group so who's the one that looks homeless when you guys go out uh who's looking homeless i'm i'm, I'm sure a lot of guys would say me um so i have to be <laughs> i have to be honest with that one um i don't know uh I feel like I see uh, Sammy wear the same thing a lot, but he looks good in what he's wearing. So, um, no, maybe it's just his go-to and it works. Who's um, always late or who always who always gets there close to the time of meetings and stuff like that? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, when it comes to team meetings and stuff like that, everyone's pretty dialed in and no one's late for that. But if it's something a little more casual and, um, you know, Greg Morales, he's a guy that we kind of, is in our carpool whenever we're going somewhere and usually you say you'll be there at 315 and you're still waiting in your car 320 325 for him to to get out and be ready so um yeah, he's usually you can count on him being uh making you wait who always forgets their wallet when it's time to pay for dinner i don't know i don't know i think uh everyone's pretty pretty good with that one uh no one's really sitting on their wallet for too long i think Guys are guys are stepping up when they have to. Who's the most fun in the group chat? Um, Miller is definitely not shy in there. He likes to toss around quite a quite a bit. And uh, Kale Cassie, he's got some good ones, and he's good for a couple laughs when we're on the road. Or um, you know, he's not afraid to to go at guys, and it's it's a lot of fun when he's uh, when he's in the mix. Yeah, I know. I asked Volstead that when I was there, like, as everyone said in that video, like, who had who did the win the piety contest, you know, and, and everyone picked him. Maybe they just wanted to, to rag on him a little bit. He's like, I don't even like pie. I just like desserts. <laughs> yeah. But, Wally, Wally's a good target too. After he's fun when, when you pick him, because you know, he's going to give it right back. So that's what you want. What's uh, the off season look like for, uh, 
for Guinea, I guess we're going with now. Uh, what you gonna go back to Winnipeg? Do you golf? Hit the lakes? Yeah, um, I like to take a couple weeks after the season, just kind of away from working out and skating, and just getting away from uh, you know just resetting the mind. And uh, after that couple weeks is done, it's kind of Monday to Friday. You're in the gym and on the ice a couple times throughout the week, and more so as you get closer to the season. But um, weekends and Afternoons and evenings, I like to golf a lot. Um, that takes up quite a bit of my time. Uh, and then, yeah, lakes lakes are pretty big around uh, Manitoba. You go a little bit east, it's some nice lake country there in uh, western Ontario, so that's really nice too. And uh, you know, I'm grateful that I get to do that and be on the boat and just be in the sun. Camping, I, I love doing that too, really anything outside. What do you call think- a house on a lake? <laughs> uh is it on an island i don't know well i mean what what would you call the, a structure that someone might sleep in that's on a lake not a house but yeah, uh, a sleeper boat maybe okay would you call it a, a cabin or a cottage i would pro- oh i would probably call it a probably a cabin yeah oh. I, I say cabin you're already like everyone in minnesota's favorite canadian perfect <laughs> It's a big, it's a big battle between cottage versus cabin, like where you're, where you're from, like in Michigan, you're from is cottage and, you know, said that in Minnesota, all of a sudden you're, you're blacklisted from invites there. So yeah, a little I, think, different. I think that one goes north of the border to, to Winnipeg too. You hear cabin a lot more than you hear cottage. Well, you mentioned you love golf and that kind of leads into our kind of weekly question we ask everybody. So Scott, you want to do the honors here? Yeah, we got our waggle golf question. Get your waggle on dot com. Throw in promo code SP10 for 10% off. Who is in your dream golf foursome? And this can be like golfer, other athlete, dead, alive, like anyone. You just got to tell me who the three are that round out your foursome. Yeah, this is good. We were actually talking about this on the bus the other day. Um, I think one that you have to play with is Michael Jordan. Um, you know, you hear the stories about him and how competitive he gets. I think to be right in the mix there with playing a match against him would be fun. Um, Tiger Woods would be pretty incredible too. Um, I think he'd be in there. And then uh, the last one would be Adam Sandler for some comedic <laughs> relief and take some of the tension with those two other two guys in the in the group. Could probably get pretty serious. So riding, riding Sandler's cart and he would probably uh, lighten things up a bit like that and so i mean how many times are you making him do the happy gilmore swing every every tee box oh, man. you almost you almost got to add shooter mcgavin to that mix yeah maybe he can be on the sidelines or like have them like playing off each other the entire way yeah it could be unreal <laughs> looking forward to happy gilmore too definitely looking forward to that it's going to be uh pretty uh pretty epic there yeah, he's so. sweet. um but yeah like thanks so much for for joining us uh, a lot of fun you know, obviously learning more about you a little bit and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys make a little bit of a run here towards the end of the season. So, and I'm sure we'll see you at, at camp as well. Yeah. Thank you.